Oh gosh, look at the crowd. Come this way. Those who spread goodness radiate happiness to everyone around them. Introducing LOLC Finance Credit Cards. Fuel the goodness in you. Welcome to MD TV. I'm Ashwini Vedakan. Joining us this week on Talking Business is the president of the Event Management Association of Sri Lanka, Roshan Vijay Ratna. Welcome to the show, Roshan. It's good to have you with us. Thank you, Ashwini. Thank you for inviting me to be on this program. Thank you very much. Roshan, where do you stand on the raging debate about whether we should continue with our lockdowns or not? What do you consider the pros and cons? Okay, basically with the current situation, I think the only way we can control this and if we are to think long term, we feel that the best would be to go in for a lockdown at least for a period of two weeks so that our health sector, which is uh, which has, I think, almost collapsed, can get their act together and control the spread of the disease. So how should the government mitigate the impact on livelihood and the economy? See, with uh, basically with it being uh, out of control, I think the government is spending more money, especially in the health sector, you know, taking care of all these people, the expenses incurred. Uh, we are running out of space. The hospitals are full. The centers are full. And um, at least if they can go in for a lockdown and you're looking at the daily wage earners and at least the, financially if they can support them, you know, with the money that they are going to save because as the cases keep increasing, we also keep spending more money on oxygen and on the health sector. So at least the government should look at uh, helping the daily wage earners and then, you know, take it forward from there because uh, otherwise this, this is going to drag for a longer period and people are not going to be able to go in uh, go going for work. The event management sector has suffered severe blows during the pandemic. Where do you see the sector heading here on? So we are in a crisis situation right now. Uh, first blow was uh, with the Easter Sunday bomb attacks. And since then, we've been getting hammered. So um, we are in a very bad situation currently because our industry has been um, shut for the last uh, 16 months. And this is a very important sector in our economy. And, uh, you know, it, it's a case of we are trying to figure out how we are going to come out of this and uh, when the government will open our industry, uh, purely because we've been continuously shut without it being opened at any time, even after the first wave. Many people don't understand what event management involves. What is its size and how does career progression take place? See, uh, the event management industry in Sri Lanka, we are professionally, we've been doing events, I think, for the last uh, 30 years or so, right? And, uh, you know, when we started this industry, we didn't have the uh, proper facilities, the infrastructure, the equipment, and so on. So even when we did uh, a lot of the foreign events, we had to bring down people from overseas, the expertise, and some of the equipment. But over the last 30 years, there has been a lot of investment that's gone in. And... Uh, the industry has grown. You know, we had a handful of event companies then. Now in Sri Lanka, we have over, a, uh, I, I think we have over a hundred event companies. And uh, it is, uh, if you look at our local market, we estimate it to be uh, a, a 32 billion rupee industry. But if you look at the global industry, uh, in 2018, this was a $1.1 trillion industry worldwide. And it was expected to uh, grow up to 2.3 uh, uh, trillion, uh, I, I think, um, uh, within, by 2026, right? So there is a huge piece of this cake that we also can have for Sri Lanka, especially to earn foreign exchange when you look at the mice sector. And if you just look at the Asia-Pacific mice se sector, it's a $230 uh, uh, industry, and it was... Uh, supposed to go up to, I think, in 2025 to uh, something like 400 and, uh, $440 billion from $230 billion. So that is the size of this industry, right? And so this is why I say that the event industry is absolutely important for economy to earn foreign exchange. That is on one hand. The other is also for the local uh, companies and the private sector companies you know, in terms of launching their products to conventions, to promotions, to giving incentives to their staff, to so on. It's a very important sector. So there is a way of ensuring career progression? Oh, well, see, the event industry is, um, it's, it's, it's not a cakewalk. It's a lot of work. It's a high-pressure job. 
and um, you know currently now there are institutions that are doing courses you know the uh, degrees on event management and so on and as a career if you select this i mean it's a fantastic industry uh, it, it's it's not an industry where you just sit at a desk and work you know it's uh, it's very interesting because every event is different there are lots of challenges and uh, career wise i mean there are there are people who have basically come into this industry without any experience like me without any knowledge of the industry where we've got into it there are people who have even worked in my company who have gone out and started their own event companies and, and doing absolutely well so as a point of uh, as a career i think there is a lot of progress you can have in this industry from uh, from the technical side as well as the production and the event management side. Prashant, what do you consider as potential threats in the post-pandemic era? So the biggest threat, okay, we have, uh, I would say the biggest would be once uh, things come back to normal and when the industry opens out, uh, we are going to have an issue in finding uh, staff, manpower and so on. purely because of our industry being shut for 16 months a lot of people have some have closed up their operations and gone into other businesses most of the trained crew I mean, this uh, the industry has spent a lot of money training people in terms of managing in terms of technology and so on you know the technicians the creative people so they've gone into other industries so our challenge is going to be to get these people to come back because as you know our industry is not a 9 to 5 job we work 7 days a week we work 20 hours 30 hours at a stretch so sometimes when you get people getting comfortable in you know going back to their homes doing the regular 9 to 5 job for us to get them back the second issue that we uh, can have is with equipment because the uh, technology and the equipment that we are using uh, the companies has spent hundreds of millions in uh, electronic equipment light sound led screens projection equipment and so on this equipment has been lying in storage now for one and a half years and uh, they haven't been able to take it out to use it and as you know with electronic equipment when you don't use it for a period of time you are going to have issues and the challenge is going to be how are we going to replace uh, this equipment because the companies will not have the finances we will also have import restrictions uh, with the current exchange rates whether it is viable for anybody to import equipment uh, because uh, local market is not a massive market because our companies don't have a uh, huge budgets so these are the challenges that um, we are going to face because it's an industry that was built over a period of time and i have a feeling that we are going to have to do a lot of work to start again from the bottom to get the industry going and on that note we'll be going in for a short break Welcome back to the show as we continue our conversation with the president of the Event Management Association in Sri Lanka, Roshan Vijayaratna. Roshan, could you describe the Event Management Association? How did it come about and what is its end goal? So, uh, the association came uh, came about uh, after the Easter Sunday uh, attacks where the industry came together and formed the association to see how we are going to Uh, engage the government bring the industry together and how we can work together so our initial thing of coming together was after the easter sunday attacks but of course uh, once we formed the committee and started working on it we looked at a more uh, long term operation in terms of we had our standards had come down a lot in terms of uh, because a lot of people are getting into the industry without uh, an understanding of the industry what this industry is about it is not an industry that you get into just to make money but it, it's it's uh, uh there's a lot of work involved in it so we were looking at uh, how to uplift the standards uh, in terms of training staff safety standards also we were having lots of issues with venues how we can iron these out so that we represent the industry especially dealing with um, uh, the venues that we have events with with the government uh, we didn't come under any ministry so we were very keen to make sure that uh, the government recognizes our industry uh, and uh, also that we also fall under the ministry so that we have some kind of representation in uh, parliament as well 
So currently we have uh, our association basically is not for individuals. It's for companies. And uh, we have 65 uh, member companies who are uh, members of the association. And also we have a strict criteria where, you know, to join the association, you have to have a minimum of five years experience in event management, uh, at least a minimum of uh, 30 events, at least five events a year. Uh, you have to be a legally registered uh, company um, in Sri Lanka. Uh, so those were the, that's the criteria we had for uh, anybody joining the association so that we have a very professional standard. Given the situation we currently live in, every sector finds itself innovating to survive. So what are the potential revenue generating initiatives the sector has embarked on? Yeah, I mean, straight after COVID and when, uh, when we went into lockdown, I was amazing that the, the local event immediately and uh, we were looking at because we knew that the industry was not going to uh, be able to work for some time and uh, people started doing online events, but it's not just doing a, a, a Zoom event. You know, there was a lot of uh, uh, creatives going on for virtual events in, in terms of uh, developing software, uh, creating, you know, their studios and so on so that we were getting ready to do virtual events and it has been happening. We've had local companies who have been doing virtual events even for foreign clients. So that's how uh, excellent our standards are. And for the last, um, la last year or so, we have been doing virtual events, but that's not the answer for industry because uh, virtual events will not pay your bills because uh, they've invested so much money and their equipment is in storage and there's nothing they can do to use their equipment. So that's the current situation uh, where the industry is concerned. Roshan, last year, the sector was rumored to be on the brink of bankruptcy. Does it still find itself in that position? So it's a huge number. Many of them have lost their jobs. Some companies, yes, have gone bankrupt. They have shut their operations. Uh, they have gone into other situations, other, other, other industries. Uh, we have companies who are unable to meet their financial commitments. Uh, majority of them don't have collateral to get bank facilities because uh, in terms of uh, property, they don't have, and nobody's going to take equipment as um, collateral. So that's, uh, they are affected. But at least if the government, like every other industry, you know, they kept opening for short periods. If, if you look at from last year, um, there were the hotel sector, they, they lifted the travel restrictions. People were able to go on holidays to the, to the hotels. So the tourism and the hotel sector had some kind of income. Those in weddings, uh, we have members who handle weddings as well. Sadly, the corporate has been continuously shut for 16 months. And we made many representations to the government. We've met everyone possible from, uh, we had meetings, uh, the initial meeting with the president, we've had meetings with the prime minister, we've had meetings with the ministers, uh, the health minister. We had a recent meeting with uh, Honorable Basil Rajapaksa uh, and Minister Ajit Nimad Kabral, tourism minister. Uh, and uh, health authorities, as well as the army commander. And we explained to them the importance of this industry, the investment that's, that's gone in, and the situation that our companies are faced with. Unfortunately, for some reason, they don't seem to be understanding what this industry is, and by what they are doing, the impact on the economy as well. Um, at a meeting we had a couple of weeks ago uh, with Honorable Basil Rajapaksa, we, we explained to him that, you know, we've been shut for 16 months. And how would you expect any company, any company, small or big, to survive, uh, you know, for 16 months uh, without work? So the government says, don't come to us for money. You generate funds. We will give you all the facilities. We'll open up the industries for you all to work and pay your staff and meet your expenses which is good, but they haven't done that. So it's no point just talking, you know, what we need is, you know, why wait till this current situation where we are in a crisis and we ourselves understand the industry cannot be open with what's going on right now. But at least when we spoke to them last year, if they gave us, you know, a few windows of, you know, uh, opening up our industry where we could have worked for a month or two, 
you know, or a few months on and off where we would have uh, had an income at least to meet our financial expenses. So this is something that they, they refuse to understand. And we've been talking to them continuously. What initiatives do you think the government should be involved in or at least assist with in order to revive the sector? See, currently, I think uh, we have to wait till they bring the third wave under control because we ourselves know that uh, you, we cannot, I mean, we bring people together and this is not the current, uh, you know, it's not the time for us to bring people together, especially since the uh, vaccination drive is still going on until people are vaccinated. So we see that at least for the next uh, two months or three months, we are not going to uh, be able to operate. But I think at this, although the government says that they cannot help us financially or they ca can't uh, give us any grants, or they need to help us at this time because it is they who kept us shut for 16 months. So they need to help us uh, with the banks because, see, uh, when, when the moratorium was given, yes, the government, we thank the government for recognizing us and, you know, giving us those facilities. But our people went and took those loans, which are the biggest mistake they made uh, because now they are paying interest on interest because they got the moratorium for six months. Then it was extended for another six months. So what happens is all these interests which accumulated also have been converted into loans. So now the issue is that they are in a worse situation than what they were in when the industry went into lockdown last year. They've gone into, you know, there's more debt, more loans to pay. So this is the time the government has to look at, okay, we kept this industry shut and we need to help them out because they need to understand that once the industry opens, Right. And this is going to be, uh, you know, Sri Lanka is uh, a mice destination. And with the port city coming up, uh, we are going to have a lot of companies who are going to come into this country. So we have asked for regulations to protect our industry, uh, especially, you know, we are going to have uh, the event companies from India and China and so on coming to Sri Lanka to do events. And we want regulations to protect the industry because there are a lot of local companies that have gone into uh, investments. Uh, we have, uh, we are registered with the Sri Lanka Tourism uh, Development Authority with the Tourist Board, but um, sadly they are trying to bring in some uh, regulations and guidelines to the uh, destination uh, event management uh, companies, which is not the right time. And unfortunately, the government hasn't been having discussions with us on this, especially trying to put in guidelines when we are the main stakeholders of the industry. Ideally, they should have spoken to us. Uh, before introducing guidelines. They just had one meeting and since March, we are asking them uh, for a meeting. We've written to them over and over again. Uh, so we want the government to engage us more, talk to us, understand the industry before you put in any regulations and so on. And now, since you have kept us close, we need help now. So you need to help our companies who are, uh, you know, financially, they just can't survive anymore. Well, this has definitely shed some light on the current status of the sector. And we thank you for joining us on the show this evening, Roshan. We hope your association will come out of this situation stronger, as we will soon need to be entertained. Thank you, Ashwini and uh, LMD TV for inviting the Event Management Association for and having me on this program. Uh, wish you all the best and thanks once again. Coming up, we have the latest from the LMD Nielsen IQ Business Confidence Index. Stay tuned. You love the feeling of being renewed. To stay beautiful every single day. To breathe just like we do. Because you are truly delicate. Protecting the ones who've been with us through the years. With Sailac Care, the only wood coating that truly protects you. Sailac Wood Coatings from Jet. show and here's the latest from the LMD Nielsen IQ Business Confidence Index. The BCI recovered an increase of 11 basis points to 98 in August, its highest point since April. Despite this, however, the index remains below its 12-month average at 106 and 19 points shy of where it stood a year ago when the government was swept into power at the general election. Nielsen IQ's Director of Consumer Insights, Tarika Meenadenia, 
offers insights into the latest BCI results, stating the vaccination drive was steadily progressing with 99% of the population over 30 having obtained the first dose of the vaccine and around half of this group receiving both doses on the 23rd of August. As for the index, she states, with the onset of a fourth wave, where death rates as well as new cases are escalating every day, shortages of gas, milk and sugar, and the announcement of a nationwide lockdown, both the BCI and the Consumer Confidence Index, or CCI, are likely to fare well in September. With new cases and deaths continuing to rise and the extension of the nationwide lockdown, the index could very well free fall to where it stood last month. And that's all we have for you this week. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for watching and stay safe.